horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high of silver, the Lone Ranger. With his faithful Indian companion, Tonto, the masked rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. The stories of his strength and courage, his daring and resourcefulness have come down to us through the generations. And nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver! Hurry, big fellow! I'm Silver! Hi! It was almost noon, and the sun was hotter than Ridge Lawton liked it to be. Ridge pulled a grimy bandana from his hip pocket and wiped the perspiration from his face and neck and tried to ease himself farther back in the shade of the woodshed. Oh. Hey, Freddy. Yes, sir? That'll be enough for now, I guess. It's too hot to be working in the sun. Come on over here and rest a spell. I don't mind the heat, Uncle Ridge. Besides, I like to split wood. It's good exercise. You, you like the uh, exercise? Sure. Um, great lad, Freddy is. Mighty fine youngster. Kind of reminds me of myself when I was that age. Uh, better knock off there and rest a spell, boy. Come on over and sit here in the shade. Whew. Hot. I was reading a book last week about Abe Lincoln. Did you know that he used to be a rail splitter? Who'd you say? Abe Lincoln. His real name's Abraham, but I guess everybody calls him Abe. Oh, Abraham. Why'd you say so? They say he's so honest, some folks call him Honest Abe even. Uh-huh, that's right. Good old honest Abe. And he was awful strong. I guess that'd come from splitting fence rails back in Illinois. One time he got in a wrestling match with a smart Alec fella and threw him clear out in the street. Yeah. Of course, that was before they made him president of the whole United States. After he got to be president, he couldn't go around getting into wrestling matches and such. Well, now, I ain't so sure about that. I recall one time old Honest Abe said to me, he said, Ridge, you always call me Ridge, when a fella sees a job that has to be done... Jiminy! I never knew that you knew President Lincoln. Huh? Oh, sure. Sure, I... Guess I just never thought to mention it to you. Was that while you were a United States Marshal back in Missouri? Um, yeah, seems like it was about that time. Of course, in them days, me and Abe had to work together lots of times. You mean catching outlaws and such? Well, sort of, in, in a way. Of course, Abe never took none of the risk, like me. He was a, a lawyer, see? I know. It was my job to go round up the killers and train robbers and such like and bring them into town. Old Abe, he'd speak a piece out of his law books, and then I'd haul him away to prison. Yeah, but... But if you were the United States Marshal in Missouri, and Mr. Lincoln was a lawyer in Illinois, I, I oh, don't... Oh, I say, uh, wasn't that your Aunt Melissa I just heard? Hmm? I didn't hear nothing. Well, I did. Reckon she's calling us to come in for dinner. Here, I'll put the axe away, and you can lug that killing into the wood box. That afternoon, in the small town of Red Star, young Freddie Lawton was retelling the sterling adventures of his great-uncle Ridge. 
Yes, sirree. And that isn't all, Mr. Stanley. Uncle Ridge used to be a United States Marshal back in Missouri. Did you know that? Uh-huh. Your Uncle Ridge must have sure been a rip-snorting badge toter in them days, Freddy. At least from the way he tells it. <laughs> uh, what's old rough and ready Ridge been up to now, young one? You'd just better learn to show more respect for my Uncle Ridge, Pudgy Baker. Someday he's gonna yeah, come... Yeah, he's gonna come down here and skin me alive, huh? Just like he fought them 27 engines with his bare hands when he was special agent for the Union Pacific back in Kansas. <laughs> yeah, a lot you know about fighting, I'll bet. <laughs> I'll bet you'd run if you saw just one engine. You better tell that warless face uncle of yours to stop lying so much, else he won't never go to heaven, see? Don't you call my uncle a liar, you... You old outlaw! Dear, you fresh brat. Now watch your language for I box your ears for Let you. Let me go. I'll kick you... That right in the shins. Bless your height. I'll Turn me loose. Let the kid loose, Pudgy. Stop teasing. Yeah, well, I'll show this kid some manners. You. You let boy go pronto. Oh, sure. Sure, Injun. Uh, maybe you'd like to take his place, huh? He not looking for trouble. Well, I am seeing a mad. There's just one thing I hate worse than a redskin. That's a nosy redskin. Uh huh? Oh, come then. Later we come back, get groceries. All right. Uh, just a minute, you. You take hands off, Pronto. Why, you? Oh. Yeah, now, maybe next time you keep your nose out of my business. You asked for trouble, and now you get trouble. Oh, you Why, are you pretty? Hey, that's enough. Cut it out. Not enough yet. Enough now. No. Golly, Tonto. You sure gave him an awful pasting. Where'd you learn to use your mitts like that, Injun? Huh. Me have plenty good teacher. You sure did all right. I'll bet even Uncle Ridge couldn't have done better. Yeah, look, Freddy. When you go home, you tell Ridge to come down here. Tell him I want to see him, you hear? All right. Uh, where do you live, Freddy? With my aunt and uncle. About four miles west of here. Is your uncle a farmer? He used to be a lawman. Huh. But he isn't anymore. He, well, he's what you might call retired. Yeah, and he's what you might call lazy. Huh? Oh, nothing. You just tell Ridge I want to see him next time he gets to town. Uh, Tano and I are riding west as soon as we get some provisions, Re Freddy. If you'd like, you can travel with us. Sure. And if you want, you can stop at our place and meet my uncle. Boy, wait till I tell him what Tano done to Pudgy Baker. Oh, 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 Freddy, oh. what kept you so long? Who's your friends, eh? <laughs> This is Dan Reed, and this is Tano. This is my Uncle Ridge I was telling you about. Honey, how? how? Do, boy, honey. oh boy, you should have been down to Stanley's store and seen what Tano did to Pudgy Baker. Uh, what happened? Uh, Pudgy was blown off steam, and he called you a big old liar. And he then did? I, yeah, and then I got mad and kicked him in the shins. Oh, what you want to do that for? Because he got me mad, and I called him an old outlaw. And then he grabbed me, and that's when I kicked him. And then Tano here, he told Pudgy to let me loose. And then they got into it, and boy, Tano sure gave him a going over. You, uh, you whipped Pudgy Baker with your bare fists, huh? Uh-huh. Well, can't say as I wouldn't have done the same thing. He's a no-count, Freddy, that's certain. But you shouldn't go around calling folks outlaws, Freddy. But you said he was an outlaw, Uncle Ridge. You said that your own self. Yeah, yeah, I guess I did. And for that matter, he is. Someday, I'm going to have to take care of that fella. Just like I did Clay Allison back in the old days in Calhoun County. Wasn't Clay Allison a notorious man-killer? Yep. In fact, there never was anybody notoriouser than him. That's for certain. But I run him into a hole and smoked him out good. Was that when he used to work with Bat Masterson? No, I was trailing with Wild Bill Hickok at the time. Uh, yeah. Allison Teller. Him plenty fast gunfighter, huh? Oh, he sure was, Tonto. Uh. And he's smart, too. When I smoked him out of his hole and told him to either reach for his gun or come along peaceful, he showed how smart he was by coming along with me, peaceful as a kitten. Mm-hmm. Play Allison, him some kitten. Tell him about the time you went after Billy the Kid. How you and the Lone Ranger cornered the him in The Lone that... Ranger? Oh, uh, you know Mask Man, huh? Do I know him? Shucks. <laughs> Me and the Lone Ranger were saddle partners for a long time, all through the Southwest Territory. Now, there's a fella to ride with. Why, boys, I could tell you things you just wouldn't believe about the places I've been and the outlaws I chased with the Lone Ranger. About the best friend I ever had. Ever once in a while, he writes me a letter telling me where he is. Sometimes asking for my advice and so forth. No, Dan. I've never heard nor seen the man. And uh, what was your opinion of this Ridge Lawton, Tonto? Oh, 
him plenty big windbag. But even the kind of lies he tells can be harmful. Yes, that's right, Dan. Ridge Lawton hadn't done so much bragging about his imaginary career as a lawman. There'd have been no reason for young Freddy to get into that argument with Pudgy Baker this morning. Oh, by the way, how old is Freddy? About 12 years old, maybe 13. Is that about right, Tonto? Ah. Uh, young fella just old enough. Him believe everything old windbag tell him. Actually, I suppose the old man figures he's just entertaining the lad with his tall stories. But at the same time, he's setting a bad example for the boy to follow. Well, let's get some supper. Dan, will you build a campfire? Sure. Now I'll get some water from the creek. Uh, what do you think about Lawton, Tonner Kimasabi? Oh, more or less harmless, I suppose. What I was really thinking of was a remark made about Pudgy Baker being an outlaw. Uh -huh. There might be more than a little truth to that remark. Otherwise, Baker wouldn't have been so quick to silence young Freddy. You think maybe you find out about Baker, fella? We know that a bunch of night riders have been operating in these parts lately. I'm anxious to know if Mr. Baker can, uh, well, help us locate them. Oh. I uh, want Dan to stay in camp tonight and get some sleep. You'd better stay with him. And what you do? First, I'm going to call on our friend, uh, perhaps I should say, my friend, Ridge Lawton. Then I'm going to see what I can learn about Pudgy Baker. <laughs> Lawton, him be plenty surprised see you. <laughs> I shouldn't wonder. Ridge Lawton, if you don't stop filling that boy's head full of lies, I... I don't know what I'll do. Now, oh, Melissa, ain't you got enough to fret about here in the kitchen without worrying so much about me and Freddy? Furthermore, if you'd get out once in a while and do a little honest work around here, oh, then I would Oh, you wouldn't... know good and well I've got a weak heart, Melissa. Besides, a man my age... Weak heart? Your age? Nonsense. You ain't done a day's work in 20 years. Now, now be still. Here comes Freddy. Hi. I got the wood box filled, and I closed up the chicken coop and shut the barn door. <sighs> Anything you want, Uncle Ridge? Well, now that you mention it, reckon you might as well get a pail of water from the pump and fill up the kerosene can. I, I'd get it myself, only I got my shoes off. <laughs> if you was to pump a pail of water, I'd bet the well it'd go dry. I'll get it. Only takes a minute. tell you, Mr. Outlaw. But I'm not an outlaw. You see, I hey. don't... Holy mackerel! Are, are you... you? Will uh, you call your uncle, Freddy? Tell me something. Have you got a horse named Silver? Tell me just that one thing, have you? Yes. Oh, golly! Gee whiz! Oh, boy! Wait till I get Uncle Ridge. I'll be right back. Uncle Ridge! Uncle Ridge! Come here, quick! Hurry up and see who's here! Well, what in Tuggins come over, you boy? You know who you said was the best saddle partner you ever had? You know who helped you catch more outlaws than anybody else? You know who was with you when you went after Billy the Kid? Whoa, you know... whoa, now. All I know is you're going to bust a blood vessel if you don't simmer down. Now, what's bothering you? Come here, Uncle Ridge, quick! Come here and see who's here. Who's here? Who's where? Where about is this? Who? Right outside the door, and he wants to see you. For land's sake, child, who is it? The Lone Ranger, that's who. The... Oh, uh... Who'd you say? Your old friend, the Lone Ranger. Come on out and see. Well, well, what do you know? Well, what do you know about that? Sure is a small world, ain't it? The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes... Please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
to continue our story. No one around Red Star believed old Ridge Lawton to be anything but a liar, a loafer, and a windbag. Ridge had one listener to his tall stories, however, in the person of his young nephew, Freddy. And now, with the great Lone Ranger calling on his uncle, Freddy was almost beside himself with joy. On the other hand, Ridge Lawton, remembering the brag he'd made about his friendship with the masked man, had a decidedly uncomfortable feeling as he followed the boy out of the house. Gee, Uncle Ridge, it was only this afternoon you were telling about the Lone Ranger being your friend. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, stop pushing me, Freddy. There's something all fired strange going on here that I just ain't sure about. Uh, Melissa, maybe you and Freddy ought to stay inside here. This fella don't like crowds, see? Is that so now? Well, I guess after all the things I've heard about the Lone Ranger, I'm entitled to a good look at him, ain't I? Here he is, Uncle Ridge, see? For land sakes alive, it really is the Lone Ranger. Uh, well, did you, uh, hello, hello there. Uh, how are you, sir? I, uh, wanted to see you, Ridge, uh, about a problem. I thought possibly you could give me some advice. Uh, <laughs> well, uh, For land sakes alive. Gee, uh, advice, eh? Problems, eh? Do you think you could spare a few minutes to advise me... Uh, on a few things? For the land's sake. Well, I, uh, well, sure, I, I guess so. <laughs> now, uh, you want to see me private, I reckon? Please. Uh, sure, sure, of course. Uh, this here is my wife, Melissa. How do you do? Uh, how do you do? Uh, reckon you already met Freddy. Yes, that's right. How are you, Freddy? Gee, I'm... I'm fine, golly. Uh, uh, Melissa, suppose you make up a pot of coffee... Me and the Lone Ranger's gonna set out here for a spell. Uh, Freddy, you hustle around and get your chores finished up, will you? Oh, all right, Reed. Uh, you, uh, you wanted to see me, huh? Well, I'm sure proud, masked man. Are you? You haven't much reason to be, you know. Huh? Well, what do what you mean? The, uh, problem I wanted your advice on concerns you and Freddy. Huh? The boy almost got into serious trouble in Red Star today because of you. What? Do you mean that argument at Stanley's store? How'd you know about that? The Indian and the boy Dan who were there. They're friends of mine. The, the Indian and Dan Reed? Oh, then they must have been laughing at me when I was telling them about That isn't important. The thing that matters is that young Freddy believes everything you tell him. And someday, people are going to be laughing at him for believing you. Oh. What's uh, your advice on the problem, Ridge? Uh, now, now, look, I... I admit you're right in, in gigging me this way. You but... have a chance now to redeem yourself in the eyes of your wife and to justify most of the wonderful confidence that boy has in you. Will you take it? How do you mean... When a man starts telling tall stories, he's liable to be, uh... Yeah, that's right, all right. I'm sure you do. Ridge, I want you to promise me that you'll never tell another lie to young Freddy. You, you... What? Oh, you mean not never anymore? Not even little old harmless stories? They're not harmless. Freddy got into trouble today because a man in Red Star calls you a liar. The boy was eager to defend you. Who do you think was right? Pudgy Baker or your nephew? Well, now, of course. I... All right. All right, I'll promise. No more lies. Not, not even little old teeny one. I'll shake your hand on that. Now I want to know how much you can tell me about... Oh, Ryder's coming. Hmm. Wonder who's heading out here this time of night. Were you expecting anyone? No, I didn't. Hmm. Thought that sounded like two horses a minute ago. So did I. I'll see you later, Ridge. Well, you don't have to leave, do you? Don't mention my visit here to anyone, will you? Why, of course not. I certainly wouldn't do a thing like that. Ho, 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 boy. Ho, ho there. Grab. Well, howdy. What brings you out this way, Mr. Stanley? Hi, Ridge. You, uh, very busy these days? Busy? Why, yeah, um, no, uh, sort of. Why? I was wondering if you'd take a job for a spell. Job? Oh, everything coming at once. Um, 
What kind of job? Well, as you know, I opened up a government post office down to the store a few weeks back. But I ain't been able to find uh, just the right man to carry the mail from Cooper's Junction. Well, I thought Cracker Benson was taking care of that job. He was, but Cracker's been kind of under the weather lately. <laughs> More likely he's been under the table down the saloon. Ridge, I'd sure be obliged if you'd help me out for a spell. At least until I can find someone permanent. Oh, uh, you wasn't offering the job permanent then, eh? Well, that's different. I reckon I might help out for a little bit. Of course, you know, I got lots of things to look after here to home now. The uh, I... job won't last too long, Ridge. Well, glad to get that off my mind. When Jake Stanley rode away from Ridge Lawton's place, the old man remained outdoors in the cool evening to ponder the sudden development that had taken place. Suddenly, a voice sounded close by. Ridge. What? Oh. oh, I thought you'd gone away. Who was your visitor? Jake Stanley runs a general store at Red Star. Friend of yours? Who, Jake? Sure. He's everybody's friend. I understand you've made certain remarks around town about Pudgy Baker being an outlaw. Well, he is. He's a mean devil. No good for nothing. Describe him, will you? Mm, big Jasper... Kind of red-headed. Does he limp a little when he walks? Yeah. Horse fell on him once. Crippled him up a bit. What did Stanley want of you? He wanted me to take a job carrying the mail from Cooper's Junction to Red Star. Just temporary, of course. I think the job would prove to be more temporary than you expect. However, it might have led to something quite permanent. Oh, no, no. I told Stanley I wasn't interested. Remember when Stanley came up the trail this evening? Remember we thought we heard two horses? Yeah. I was sure So I... was I. I investigated. The other rider answers your description of your friend Pudgy Baker. Baker? Well, what was he doing around here? Planting evidence that would send you to prison for a good many years. What? I saw him sneaking into the barn while you were talking to Stanley. Here, this is what he left. Letters. And... Uh, why, they're, they're full of money. Why, that Horton reload... Load... The plan oh. seems simple enough. Stanley hires you to carry the mail... Between Cooper's Junction and Red Star, you'll be held up and robbed. When you ride into Red Star and tell your story, how many people do you think will believe you, Ridge? Why, shucks, why shouldn't they believe me? Because you've sort of drifted away from telling the truth. You understand, I think. Uh, yeah. They'll think you're lying. When they come here to investigate, uh, they'll... How, how does Stanley fit into... Why, he must be right in cahoots with Baker. With a road down, double crossing weasel. Fortunately, we can change the procedure a little. Now listen carefully. Do exactly as I tell you. Tomorrow morning, you go to Cooper's Junction. Well, it's old Red Slot. He sure is fetching the mail. Yo, Tom, look at him come. The like engines was after him. Yeah. Here, look at him right yeah. here. Oh, 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 oh. Well, you sure been smoking up the trail, Red. Uh, so would you, mister, if you'd just been held up and robbed of the United States mail. Yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah. Just a minute, Lawton. It so happens that you was carrying our payroll in that mail today. Yeah? Right, sure. Well, it's sure gone now, boys. Hold on there. Who robbed you? Uh, well, well how, how, how should I know? You don't think the fella give me his name or nothing, do you? Oh, but I think you're lying like you always do. I'm just wondering if you ain't been helping yourself to that payroll. Oh, yeah. see here, Pudgy yeah. Baker. Yeah. Just a minute now. I'm postmaster here, and I got just a man to take charge of this thing. And I say, let's go out to Ridge's place. Yeah. The payroll's been stolen. That's a good place to find it. You're right, Pun. Folks, this here's John Redman. He's a United States Marshal from up north. Marshal, looks like he got here just in time to go to work. <clears throat> yeah. Lawton, come on inside. I want to talk to you. Later, maybe we'll just go out to your place and take a look-see, huh? Well, come on, let's look in the barn. He's probably got it hidden in the hay mow. You fellas are making a big mistake, Mr. Stanley. Yeah? Well, if you ain't done nothing wrong, you got nothing to worry about. Is that right, Marshal? Yeah, that's right. All right, you fellas, scatter out and hunt around. I'll see what you can find. Hey, here's a likely-looking place. Yeah, it looks like somebody's been in here just lately, too. Make a good place to hide. 
Hey, look here, everybody. Look at here. Look what I got here. Well, a pack of letters. Ridge, I'm sure surprised. Yeah, you ain't been surprised at all yet. Well, what do you mean by that? Here, Marshal, here's your evidence. Take a look inside them letters. Mm hmm. Oh, well, well. Place your hand, Stanley. You too, Baker, quick. What? Hey, what? Uh, Ridge, let's see what you got under that tarpaulin in the corner there. Sure, sure. Just a second. Where? Well, what do you know? It's Cracker Benson, the mail carrier. Benson? All wrapped up like a Christmas turkey. What do you know about that? Uh, ain't that the mail sack laying inside of him? Pudgy, what the place has happened? Now, see here, Marshal. I don't know what you're holding a gun on me and Pudgy for. You'll find for. out, amigo. Ridge, dehorn these two fellas. Well, Ridge there, he must have been in cahoots with Cracker, huh? What was in them letters in the hay mouth? Well, only one of them says anything important, Pudgy. Says you and Stanley was conniving with Benson to rob the mail and lay the blame on Ridge Lawton. Uh, these other letters. Oh, now. shucks now, Marshal. You don't have to read them. Just look at the dates on them envelopes. Huh? Look at the dates? What? I say, these letters was written 40 years ago. Oh, and all of them addressed to Miss Melissa Crabtree. Yeah, the Crabtree. That was my wife's maiden name. Ridge oh, Lawton oh, oh. of all the lowdown. Now, here, you give me back them love letters and be quick uh, about oh, it. Yeah. Why, the very idea. Gee, Willikers, Uncle Ridge. Did you capture that outlaw and bring him here for the marshal of fine? Did you? Uh, well, oh, uh, Freddie, my boy, I'll tell you just how it happened. You see, when... Uh, when... Uh, uh, yes. Son, I didn't have a blame thing to do with it. The Lone Ranger and Tonto took care of the whole job. Hell, for the land's sakes. Ridge Lawton, what has come over you? The story you have just heard is a copyrighted feature of The Lone Ranger Incorporated.